Welcome back. This is John Locke, and today I'm talking about a conversation that I saw online that I thought was somewhat interesting, and uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. But in this conversation, um, there was an SEO consultant that was uh, putting forth an idea that the reason why it's so difficult for people to learn SEO is a lot of the uh, top ranking posts for different things are these long ultimate guides to whatever it is, ultimate guide to SEO. And uh, there are these long 10,000, 20,000 word uh, <laughs> novels, basically. And people get overwhelmed and they don't want to complete it. Now, I don't know if I agree 100% with that, but I have my own theories about why SEO is difficult for people to learn. And I'm going to talk about the three types of people, at least in my experience, that I've seen that try to learn SEO and the reasons why each one of those uh, types of people, in most cases, if they do get stuck learning SEO, the reasons why it usually happens. Okay, so let's start with that. The first type of person that tries to learn SEO is a business owner that maybe they're not busy 12 months of the year. They might have a seasonal business. They might be busy 8, 9, 10 months of the year. And they might have one season where it's a little bit slower. And that is the time that they usually take to focus on things like their website, their SEO, making sure everything is going to run smooth the rest of the year. They have not unlimited time, but they have time um, during a certain section of the year. And that is when they try and focus on that stuff. And uh, they might not be a huge business. They're a six, usually a successful business, but they're not super huge. They don't have 50 employees or anything like that. They might have some employees, but, uh, you know, it's not like 50 or 100 employees. Okay, so that's the first type. They are trying to learn SEO because why not? They don't necessarily want to pay somebody to do it. They have the time. That's their motivation. And so they're going to try and figure it out themselves because... They don't have a, uh, a million dollars in the bank for SEO, and they have time to do it. So they figure, why not? We're going to learn how to do it. Second type of person that tries to learn SEO would be a person that's working at um, internally on a larger company. Now, this type of company, they might have 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 employees. But they're working on the internal marketing team. And the company is not a marketing agency or a SEO team or a SEO agency. They are doing something else, but they have a marketing team. They have a team of people. Might be, you know, a few people. Might be five or six or ten. However many people. Might be one or two. Who knows? But they have a team. Of people that's dedicated toward online marketing that is the second type of person is trying to learn SEO they want to learn SEO because it's part of their job requirement but they're um, doing other marketing activities on top of that now the third type of person that I see in my experience trying to learn SEO is either a web designer or a web developer or some other type of internet marketer and they're trying to add SEO as something that they offer in their normal services. They are trying to add SEO as uh, one of the things that they can offer to their clients. So somebody who is already working full-time for themselves either as a solo uh, consultant or as part of a small but growing agency and they want to add SEO to uh, their arsenal 
of things that they can offer. So let's look at each of the three reasons why these three types of personas might get stuck uh, learning SEO and things that might impede their progress toward learning. And again, keep it in mind <clears throat> that these are just the things that I've seen in my own experience from the different types of people that I have talked to and encountered. You know, you might have different experiences and you might have different theories on why SEO seems to be challenging, but these are just my own uh, experiences. Okay. So the first, going back to the first type of person, the business owner that's trying to learn SEO. Okay, here's why they get stuck, in my experience. They usually have a few months during the year to really focus on their website and their SEO and their marketing because the rest of the time they're busy doing their core business. So they might read some articles after work, after a long day, um, and they might read during these slower months how to do SEO. They might watch some YouTube videos. They might read some articles. They might see some stuff on LinkedIn Pulse. And this is where they're drawing some of their knowledge from. They might pick up some of the concepts, some of the buzzwords. They might learn um, whatever gets repeated. That's what they're hearing. The problem is, is they only have a few months during the year where they have to pull all this knowledge together. And uh, sometimes they're not getting the full picture. They might be getting uh, 40 or 50% of the picture, but they might not be getting the rest of the picture because they're not doing SEO as their full-time job 12 months a year. They're only doing it in bits and pieces during this downtime. So some of their information might be outdated because depending on what they've read or what they've done, um, they might have, you know, older information. They might get swayed by just what's popular or what they've seen on YouTube or what they've done. And the second thing that's going to hold them back from learning SEO is they're only really working on their site. Or if they have more than one site, maybe they have a handful of sites. Those are the only sites that they're working on. They are not working on SEO for multiple different sites. So their knowledge of SEO is really, their experience, I should say, their experience of SEO is really only on their website, their one website, or if they have a, a couple websites, just those websites. That's what holds them back. Um, they're not doing SEO all through the year, and they're using uh, this knowledge that they've kind of collected in bits and pieces during the year, and they're trying to implement it all at once by themselves because they might not have enough money to uh, pay like a good SEO or maybe they just figure we're going to try and do it ourselves because they'll, we can save a few dollars that way. Okay, so that's what holds them back. Okay, the second type of person, remember, is the in-house marketer. They're working on a marketing team for um, a company that is not an SEO uh, company where they're working for uh, a different type of company but they've been charged with learning SEO and maybe they've done stuff like they've taken care of the social media account or they've added stuff to the website or you know whatever it is maybe they were part of the IT department before but because they're somehow related um, they have aptitude in one of these other areas of online stuff or computer stuff now they're being tasked with learning SEO. Problem is usually in these types of things, unless they're being hired directly from the outside to be like head of SEO for this company, which is very rare in these types of cases, they're also getting their information in bits and pieces. And they might definitely um, have, be acquainted with some of these concepts and they might know some of the buzzwords. They might know in theory some of these things that they've heard repeated a lot but what holds them back again is they're working on the one website maybe the company has a couple of websites I don't know maybe they have a handful of websites but these are the only sites that they're really working with and uh, again they got about 50% of the information but uh, there's other things that, that, that they might be missing 
because they're not working on SEO full time. And their attention is getting drawn in different directions usually. Usually they're doing other things uh, related to the website or social media or other marketing um, things like email marketing. They might be getting pulled in a bunch of different directions so they are not focused 100% on SEO all the time. That's one thing that's going to hold them back. Okay, so the third type, we got the web designer or web developer that's trying to branch into SEO because at least I can tell you this. Okay, now the success rate here that I'm going to tell you, um, a lot of these people offer SEO. And again, don't take what, what I'm going to say in this section as criticism. This is just my experience and what I've seen. About 10 to 20 percent of the people that pick this up are going to be wildly successful at SEO. Uh, a lot of these people are going to do okay. You know, maybe about 40 or 50 percent of these people are going to do okay. About 10 to 20 percent of these people are going to be wildly successful at it, but probably not more than that. And there's reasons for that. I will say this: there are a lot of people that are getting into SEO um, and different things now because they see it as something that their clients are asking for. A lot of people, quite honestly, are having a challenge because just building a website, if that's all you do, um, you have to bring a little bit more to the table. You have to either be good at building a specific type of website for a specific uh, vertical and know how to make that type of site successful in that vertical. Or um, you have to have some sort of specialized knowledge, like some specific sort of web development. Maybe you're really good at specific, um, a specific language or a specific technology or a specific type of problem that you solve. Like some people only build membership sites. Some people only build e-commerce sites. Um, some people only build uh, learning management system sites. That's what I'm talking about. But a lot of people are hearing this kind of uh, people, other people talking about how to make money online and how to make your agency successful. You see all kinds of Facebook ads for these types of things. Make your agency grow, earn a million dollars, become like a uh, six-figure consultant, become a million-dollar agency. See all kinds of stuff like this all the time, all day long. Facebook ads, they're incessant, okay? So people are hearing this. There are people are hearing about how to um, earn more monthly recurring revenue by offering SEO. The problem is, here's the root problem. People want SEO to be really simple. This is the biggest thing that holds web designers and web developers and other types of marketing people back from learning SEO. They want it to be something that they can charge 500 bucks uh, a month to their client as an add-on, but they don't want to do a whole lot. They want to be able to either go in and uh, you know slap some keywords in the title tags, maybe add some keywords to some posts, or install um, a plugin like Yoast or Rank Math or SEO Press, and uh, or add uh, schema or structured data, and that's it. Because when you tell them, in actuality, that in order to make a client site rank, that Let's say, for example, let's say that they built the site and the site looks fine. The site looks good. But if you tell them, like, hey, you're also going to have to create a whole bunch of content or the, the, the page that you want to have rank for this keyword, you have to rewrite the content or add a whole bunch to this existing content, they don't want to hear that. Or if you tell them, you know, it's going to be more difficult than just adding structured data or uploading a disavow file to, to Google. Um, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear 
that sometimes you have to rebuild the site, redo the content, build all the links, and then also on top of that, get your client to uh, be on all these different sites that maybe their clients don't want to be on. Maybe their clients don't want to be on Yelp. Maybe their clients don't want to be on LinkedIn or have a LinkedIn company page. Or uh, let's say maybe your client is a lawyer and your lawyer doesn't want to be on Avo or pay for stuff or pay for the profile to be complete or whatever it is. Maybe your client is in home services and they don't want to be on Angie's List or they don't want to be on Home Advisor or something like this. But if you don't get your client on these sites, then they're going to be at a disadvantage compared to other people uh, that are ranking. And uh, this, this is the thing. Sometimes you need to convince your clients that they need to be part of other websites, you know. Um, I had a uh, photographer that I did a SEO audit for uh, last year. And uh, one of the things that I suggested to this photographer was that they join and get profiles on about five or six different sites where all their competitors were at. All the top ranking competitors uh, in pretty much any region or any city seem to all have some of these profiles. So I said, this is something that you must go do because you're doing really, really well, but this is what's holding you back from getting even higher. This is one of the things that's holding you back. Um, so those are all things that people don't want to hear. They want it to be super, super easy, in my opinion. Um, learning SEO is really not as difficult as people make it out to be, but doing SEO is way more difficult because you do have to put in the work and the effort over a long period of time, and that is not something that people want to hear, which is why I say that only 10 to 20% of the people who transition from being a web designer or web developer actually become successful at SEO because a lot of people either cannot put in the effort for all of their clients or they want to make it like super automated and super, super uh, easy, but they don't want to hear about all this extra work that has to be done. They simply do not want to swallow that bitter pill. In my opinion, in my experience, if you have the three legs of the table, like the three things that you need to have to be successful at SEO is the, con the right content targeting the keywords that you're targeting, meaning if you're targeting a certain keyword phrase, you have the content on your site, the right content that matches the pattern of what Google is already ranking for that type of query, if you have that on your site for all the keywords that you're targeting. Okay, that's one leg of the table. Second leg is brand building, including getting links, hyperlinks from external sites, the right sites, the sites that are topically related to yours, and the sites that Google expects to see you getting links from. And you're doing all the other brand building activities like having uh, social media profiles and you have profiles in all the places where Google expects to see you promoting your business if you are indeed whatever business you are there's going to be different ones uh, there's going to be different sites that correlate to what you do but Google expects to see you there and then the third thing the third leg of the table is design and functionality meaning you have you know, everybody should have a mobile-friendly site that loads fast and looks decent uh, and it has the right functionality. People should be able to do what they expect to do, uh, you know, submit a contact form or buy a product or whatever it is that they came to do. That functionality needs to be there. If that's the type of keyword that you're trying to rank for, that functionality has to be there and the design has to look uh, decent. We're no longer in the 1990s, we're now in the 2020s. So those are the three legs of the table. And if you have those three things, 
you're going to be ahead of 90% of all the other people doing SEO. But um, like I said, SEO is not just uh, adding structured data to your site or you know sprinkling in some keywords. You got to do all these things. And people don't want to hear stuff like you might have to write your content for your um, client because if you're waiting for your client to write the content, you're going to be waiting a long time in some cases because they simply don't have the internal resources to do it sometimes. Um, so that's one thing that people don't want to hear. Um, a good looking site will go a long way, um, but you also <laughs> got to go get those uh, hyperlinks and set up all those uh, different profiles, get the links, and without the content you're not going to get the links. Um, so these are all things that you need to do. And then also, you know, the other part, your client has to get reviews from uh, customers. So, you know, hopefully your uh, client is putting out a good product and a good service and everybody in the organization is uh, even keeled and uh, they're friendly and they're good with customers because if they're not, they're going to get bad reviews if they don't follow through with it, what they say they're going to do, or if they sell an inferior product or deliver an inferior service, or if they let people down, they're not going to get good reviews, and there's no way to SEO that. So um, those, in my opinion, are the things that hold people back from learning SEO. I don't necessarily think that it's um, the fact that sometimes sites don't put it into bite-sized chunks. I definitely think there's more than enough resources out there with people saying stuff. Uh, one of the things I saw somebody say is there's uh, it's the duplicate content out there, but I think what they meant to say was it's people saying different things around the same subjects. It's confusing to people because sometimes they don't know what to believe, uh, which is where you get a lot of SEO myths and what makes it easy to identify uh, people who are selling SEO myths and maybe not doing a lot of SEO. That That's one of those things is um, if you see uh, people talking about certain things, sometimes that that's a way to identify like, uh, you know, hey, uh, maybe they're not doing all that much active SEO. Um, anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. My name is John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and SEO. I'm here every single day making videos on SEO. If you have struggled with SEO in the past of learning it, I would love to hear your opinions as to uh, why you have struggled or what obstacles uh, were in your way to learning SEO. I will be back again tomorrow with another video. I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers and people who have been watching and commenting lately. Really appreciate it. That's all I have for now. Until next time, peace.